doing today? Good. Any questions? about what these things are. What is this thing saying? What is it, Josie? 30 ends. 30 ends. Okay? Now we're talking about something. Something almost tangible. It's not tangible means we can touch it. We can't really touch it because ends aren't really things. Okay? Whatever n is, we have 30 of those ends, right? Multiplication, like 3 times 4, it's just addition a bunch of times, right? Yeah. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. 4, 4 plus 4 plus 4, it's all the same thing. Well, we have here 30 n's. 30 times n means n plus n plus n dot 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 plus n 30 times. Right? And so this means what? 8 n's. We have n wow. plus n dot 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 8 times. We're adding both of those groups of n's together. And we have all together? 38 n's. Okay. n times it's, or n plus itself 38 times. Right. So when we say stuff like like terms or it has an n, okay, what we're really, really saying is that there's 30 n's here and 8 n's here. These are 8 n's being added together, 30 n's being added together. We're adding those added together n's, and so well, it's just a bunch of n's added together, a total of 38 of them. All right. And if we can think of that, I mean, it, it, it just took me a couple of minutes to say all of that and to write it down. But it's going to take you about one second at the most. Think about that. You got 30 ends and 8 ends and okay, 38 ends. Okay. Not just because they have an end, but because they are 30 ends and 8 ends. It's a great question. Really important thing to understand. Other questions? mistakes, check and see why that might be. If you can figure out why, ask why this happened. n plus 45, or should it be 45 plus 35 n? Yeah. Does it matter? No. no. Someone tell me why it doesn't matter. Maybe use an example to show me that it doesn't matter which way I add it. Yeah. Uh, isn't it like the commutative property? It is called the commutative property. I can switch those guys around in addition, not like subtraction, not division. But multiplication and addition have this thing called the commutative property. Okay. And we can observe it just by doing some examples, it's not exactly a proof, but at least it reminds us that it's true. Right? 35n is a number, 45 is a number, we're adding them together. Okay, let's take an example like 3 plus 4. Should it be 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 3? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's called the property. Um, 
So it's correct either way. And, well, I guess more than that, we tend to write the variable term first and then the constant after that. It's just like a tradition. But it's not right or wrong, it's just a tradition. You can see here that they've written the variable term second. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. This would be the same as writing what? 2n plus negative 10? Or? 2n minus 10. Good. Okay. Everybody good? Okay. So we were talking last time at the end of class. Do you remember what we were talking about? We were talking about how to simplify expressions correctly by using the distributive property. We were talking about the distributive property. I'm going to show you. You know what the distributive property is for the most part, but I was going to show you why. Not just how. So let's say 3 times x plus 5. We were talking about something like this. And you may remember that you're supposed to multiply both x and 5 by 3. 3 times x plus 5. Right. But then I asked you, what about 3 times x times 5? Should I multiply the 3 by the x and by the 5? No. no. Why not? Because the x and the 5 are being multiplied. Okay. So why shouldn't I multiply the 3 by the x and the 5? You're saying they're being multiplied. I guess you mean they're not being added. Yeah. But why not? Because I guess they're supposed to be done before like the order of operations of multiplying the 4. So you're saying it's impossible to multiply by this 3? It just has to stay the way that it is? Mm, I don't think so. So we I'm could kind sure. of simplify this. What would 3 times x times 5, how would I simplify that? Cadence? Well, you can multiply the x times the 5, so it would be um, 5x. OK, we're just writing it differently then. This means x times 5, this means x times 5. Mm -hmm. Just saying 5x. Five, five okay? You can write it that way. Just 3 times 5, and you get what? 15. 15x. You sure that's right? You sure it's not 3 times 5 and 3 times x? Ready? Wouldn't sure? it just be 3 times 5x? Because they're not the same. If you just stop, you wouldn't do anything further? Well, I wouldn't do anything. 5x is a different thing like, than just 3. Okay, so they're not like terms. Mm -hmm. All right. But combining like terms, that's more of an addition than subtraction thing. You can't put them together because they're not the same thing. Like You can add 3 and 5x because 3 is 3 of something. And 5 is 5 of something else. And you can't put those together. But remember how multiplication is just addition a bunch of times? Mm -hmm. 3 times 4 is 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. So this is 5x plus what? 5x plus 5x. 3 times, right? Yeah. We talked about this before. This is just like terms, right? There's 5x's, 5x's, 5x's. How many x's do we have all together? 15. 15. So it is 15 x. Just 5 times 3, right? I have 5 x's. I have three groups of those 5 x's. So all together I have 15 of those x's. Kind of like if I had 5 apples and, uh, in a box and, and I had three of those boxes, right? Then I have 15 apples all together. Okay, so but why do we have to multiply this x and this 5 by the 3? Can anybody say? Because uh, you wouldn't really get anywhere, because you can't, I guess you could still multiply the 3 and the 5, but I don't really see what you'd do with the x. Like, you can't multiply the 3, well you can, but you have to, have to know what x was first. Well, 
I think you're saying like we do want to multiply the three in parentheses somehow. Like we want to be able to take the next step in simplifying it. Yeah. So if we didn't do that, then we wouldn't be able to continue on and simplify it. Yeah. I agree with that, but why is it that I multiply the x and the five by three? Three times x, three times five. Why not just three times x? Why not just three times five? Why not something else altogether? I was going to say, um, it's like three times five in parentheses, okay. but there's two things in there, so it's like three times x in parentheses, and then three times five in parentheses, and you just add those together. Okay. Uh, let's see what you're saying there. Let me use the uh, rectangle. Remember, you've used rectangles to show multiplication before? Someone explain kind of basically how we can show multiplication by using a rectangle. Josie? Um, basically, so you have your rectangle, maybe the horizontal line is four squares, and the vertical line is three squares. Okay. So if you count it across, you count each row of squares, you'd get 12 squares total. Okay, so we're looking at the, what's the one that starts with A? Area. Area. Look at the area of the rectangle. If we can imagine what the area of the rectangle is, how many squares we put there, we know what the area is. Okay, and I think I've shown you this before, but nobody volunteered it. So let's see it again. So let's look at a rectangle. Right. We want to see the multiplication of two things. What two things do we want to multiply in this case? The base for the Of the rectangle. Yeah. But like that's the the yeah that's the what on the screen, what two things are we trying to multiply like specifically? Like, uh, three and the five x. Uh, three and the five x. That was one example. Yeah. But in this example, we want to do the three oh, and the x plus five. Okay. So it's like all together here. So on this side, I'll make this three, and I make this x plus five. It might be how we show that's x plus five. Let's say I just break it up into pieces. I'll call this length x. How big is x? I don't know. It's just kind of a mystery, right? You just got to imagine that it's just could be any length. All right. And let's call this 5. So whatever length this is, you can imagine, just pretend that it's 2, just for the sake of explanation. Pretend that it's 2. If this is 2 and this is 5, then how long is this? 7. 7. 7, right? It's just two, and then five more. Now the other, seven. If this is 12, and this is five, how long is this? 17. If this is nine, and this is five, how long is this? 14. Okay, so what are we doing with those two things? Adding them. Okay, but it's not nine, it's not two, it's not 12, it's x. x. Whatever x was, I would take and add it to five, and that would give me the whole length of the thing, right? So the length of this side is the same as x plus 5. Whatever x plus 5 is, that's how long that side is. Okay. So the area of this rectangle, however many squares can fit in here, if I could make sense of this somehow, the number of squares that fits there would be whatever 3 times x plus 5 is, right? Okay. Even though it's kind of abstract, how can we know how many squares fit there if there's an x that's like unknown? But whatever the area of that rectangle is, it should be whatever 3 times x plus 5 is. We all agree there? It's like the base and the height of this rectangle. So let's take all that stuff away. Well, by dividing this right there where x stops and 5 starts, I made two rectangles. Let's look at this rectangle. What's the area of this rectangle? How do you know that? Three times five. Three. Times five. So this is three as well. And so is this is three, right? Every, all the heights of all, the, wherever I look at the height, it's three. So this is three, that's five, three times five is 15. Okay, I don't know what x is, but if I did, what would be the area of this rectangle here, right? Three x, three, three times x. Three times x, just like this is three times Five is 15, three times x, I just don't know what x is yet, but when I do know what it is, I'll multiply by three. So 
the 3 times x, whatever that is, that's the area of this little rectangle here. 15 is the area of this rectangle. So what's the area of the whole rectangle? 3x plus 15. 3x plus 15. 3x squares, right? 3x squares, and 15 squares. Yeah. Add them together, not multiply them. Add them together for the total of the squares. 3x plus 15. So the distributive property we can see with an area model. What if I had, let me just take all that out, kind of done with that, um, five times x plus y plus z to z plus uh, nine. What would that be? It would be five x plus five y plus 5z plus 45. Yes, exactly. Because you can imagine this rectangle, I'll draw it super fast. It's 5 on this side, this is x, this is y, let's call that z, and this is 9. Right? This side is x plus y plus z plus 9. We get four rectangles here, this one has an area of 5x, this one of 5y, this one of 5z, this one of 45 squares. Here's another example that I like. It's, an, it's just kind of an analogy. But it's, it, is an it is literally an example of the distributive property that we use in everyday life, okay? If in your everyday life you, you cook food following a recipe, okay? You ever follow a recipe? Yes. Yeah. One cup of this, two cups of that, a tablespoon of this, you know, a pound, whatever, of all these things, all right? So you look at the recipe and you put out together all these uh, ingredients, and it says that it serves three people, right? So far so good? It serves three people. But the problem is, I don't want to serve three people. I want to serve nine people. I want to mix up enough of this stuff and, and cook it so that I can feed nine people, but the instructions, you know, all the measurements are for three people. So what do I do? You double it or triple it? Well, which is it? Or triple. You triple it. Triplet, right? What if I want to serve a 15 people? You centipolis. 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 I don't know what it is. Pentupolis. Or quintupolis. Yeah, we multiply by five. Let's say that these represent a bunch of ingredients, right? I take the ingredients, I add them together into a big bowl. Right? So here's how we could we could look at it two different ways. I can either do the recipe five different times, right, with five separate bowls. See what I'm describing here? So five separate times, exactly the recipe, the way it says, five separate bowls, then take all the five bowls, put them in together in one big bowl, and now I have enough stuff for 15 people. Is that how you normally do it? No. 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 What do you, that's, that's adding it together first, and then multiplying by five. What do you normally do with a recipe if you want to make five times as much as it says? I just add. Multiply it by five. So the problem for a cup of sugar, what do you do? Five cups of sugar. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. One way you do one cup of sugar, all the other grains, one cup of sugar, one cup of sugar, one cup of sugar, one cup of sugar, five different times. But the distributive property that we apply in our everyday life says, no, just Take every ingredient, multiply it by five, and then put it all together. That's a distributive property. See? Every ingredient gets multiplied by five. Every ingredient gets multiplied by five. Okay. So two different examples showing us how the distributive property works. All right, so now let's just uh, finish up through the end of this worksheet then. So it is at 16 through 22. Got some distributive property there. Let's see how that goes. Okay. Talk about a couple of these real quick. Um, okay. Uh, let's talk about number 19. Okay. So we got this stuff going. I don't want to give away too much. I mean, where would you start with this number 19? Great. Negative 5 times 24. 
Okay, so in, uh, in short, you distribute the negative five. That's good. You can distribute a five without, you know, thinking about the negative, but then you need to keep the negative. Yes. Or you can look at it like, um, like plus, like four, four, or plus, and there, that kind of works. Four plus negative five times all that stuff and distribute the negative along with the five. The way it'll work the same as long as we don't forget that that's a negative. So four, negative five times negative four n, what's a negative times a negative is? Positive. positive. Okay, positive 20n. Negative 5 times positive 3, 15, and 4 minus 15 is negative 11, plus 20n. Now how about number 18? When we get this negative in front of the parentheses, what do we, what do we think about that, Josie? It's, it's negative 1, it's like a visible 1 left. Exactly. So now it's almost exactly like 19. The 19 is just a number here, not a variable. And, Right? So we would just distribute that negative 1, just like we did the negative 5, find like terms, combine those like terms. Anything good? Any questions about that kind of basic distributive property stuff? Combining like terms? No? Now we're in this, this mode of simplifying algebra expressions with variables and like terms, adding and multiplying and all that stuff. Let's just keep that going. Okay. When we start solving equations, we won't solve equations with anything really to start with. They're more complicated than what you see here. Okay. But we're going to continue this idea of simplifying expressions like terms, that kind of stuff, for something slightly more complicated. So I'm going to pass these out, and then I'm going to draw your attention to number seven to start with. So take a look at that. Number seven says six x squared plus three x minus five. All right, do you have any advice for combining these? Or any questions? Question. So the order of operations in this case says exponents before multiplication, right? Mm -hmm. We got two of those. We got both of those things. We got exponents, we got multiplication. Alright? Now, if I were to take six and multiply by itself because I see a square there, that would be because I'm treating like multiplication comes before exponents. Right? The exponent is on the x. I square the x and only the x, and after the x has been squared, then it multiply by 6, okay? See? So the squaring happens to the x, but not the 6. It just belongs to the x. We square the x. Since we don't know what x is and we can't multiply it, well, we just kind of leave it as x squared. It's like instructions for the future when you know what x is. Okay? Let's look at a specific example, like 6 times 4 squared. Okay, I just plugged a 4 in there for x. Okay, the question is, do we multiply 6 by itself? The answer is no, because exponent first, so 4 squared first, then multiply by 6. Okay, so that'd be 86, no, 96. Yes. Wait, so for your final answer for this one, will there still be an exponent? Will there be an exponent? That's the that's why I brought it up. I want us to, you know, what do we do about it? Do we do do we say six x squared plus three x is like nine x cubed? Okay, because I'll tell you that's a really common thing that I see. I see that a lot. Does it make sense? Does it not? 
Why not? I don't know. Like, how did you get the cubed in there? That's a good question. That's why I said it as a, as a question myself. Cubed? Because it doesn't make any sense. So to say x cubed, I don't should I say x cubed, x squared, x, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's like an apples, oranges, a oranges situation. They're not the same thing. You're not going to add them together. Let's look at a real simple explanation. There's six of what? X's. X's? X's? Squared. X squared, right? Squared. Six of these things that are at x times itself. Okay, so I have x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus x squared x squared plus x squared. One, two, three, four, five, six x squareds added together have six x squared. That's what six x squared means. I have three of what? X's. X's. Plus x plus x plus x. Three x's. What do you think now about taking those x squareds and adding them to the three x's and saying that there's nine of something? Yeah, it just doesn't, it just plain doesn't make sense, okay? If I can put these six x's together with these, or these six x squareds with these three x's, then I should be able to just take an x squared and add it to an x, okay? But how could I? Okay, uh, really quickly, a lot of people, if they're going to make this mistake of trying to put these together, they'll make it a x to the third. Kind of see how somebody would come up with that? Yeah. Kind of. There's three x's there, right? Can someone, though, explain why x cubed plus x couldn't possibly be x cubed? There's a hint. You just got to think about what x cubed means, what x means, what x squared means. Sean? Because uh, you're adding the last x, not multiplying it. Okay, if I, I, think, I'm gonna, I think we're going to agree here. What Sean is saying is, this is two x's, right? Yeah. x times x. And Here, this is a third x. Yeah, you're adding it, not you're multiplying adding. it. This is two x's and a third x. And not when you're multiplying. But they're being all multiplied. Right? So really what you're doing here, one way you look at it, you're changing this addition to multiplication, which it's not. Addition and multiplication are not the same thing. All right. So these cannot be the same. Right. So what do we do about this problem number 7, 6x squared plus 3x minus 5? Johnny? It's that from simple. Good, that's it. It's done. It's simplified. Once I have collected all of the like terms, the x squared, the x's, and the numbers, it's done. There's nothing to, I can't put them together. You could say simplest form. Right? You know, like you went around the ranch and you collected six cows and three horses and I have five well, really, number ones, right? Because that's what that actually, we actually know what that is. Well, that's what you have. There's six horses, or six cows, three horses, and five number ones, and you just, that's it. You can't put them together. All right? So you're going to be done here in about 30 seconds. Any questions? I would like you, when we come back, to have, let's get, one through eight. Let's have one through eight done.